Who should we go with first? Should we just go in order of who came? That is that okay? So, Nilifa, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Well, hello, everybody. Good evening. Um, I was reflecting about this call. Something someone said the last time is I'm probably Manaz's oldest acquaintance on this group. We trained together, we graduated from coaching programs together. And when Manaz said, Can you come and share why coaching is important to me? It brought back a lot of memories of why I actually started on this journey. And it was really because I was very, very fascinated about human behavior and human dynamics. I was, I come from a corporate world and I always, and done a lot of voluntary work, it was always curious about what made people tick. So NLP was the nice way to get into understanding people. Uh, and the more I did, the more I wanted to do. I know what my purpose in life is, and that is to empower people. And this is one way I think I can do it. So I'm really privileged to be part of this group. Thank you for inviting me. And I hope I can do you proud. Thank you. I know you will. <laughs> um, and if we can go to Nigel to introduce yourself. Hello everyone and it's again lovely to be here and a lovely opportunity Manaz and thank you for inviting me too and as I reflect on what coaching brings to me uh, I started um, my work career as a, as a physical education teacher and I worked in schools for 40 years and after 20 years of uh, teaching and coaching young people I um, worked, I then moved into doing staff development, training, leadership work. I'm still doing that work. I'm still part-time, uh, semi-retired as a teacher. I work in school three days a week, but I also have my own coaching business and generative coach, executive coach. I run, write, develop leadership um, training programs, working with teachers, children, other adults in business, anybody that wants to work with me. And I really enjoy that work. It's tremendously rewarding. It really comes about for me for the next 20 years, for me, is about supporting others to be the best they can be. And as I do that, that enables and empowers me to be the best version of myself too. And that is a tremendous uh, place to be. And it's tremendously rewarding and it's so gratifying so it's a pleasure to be here to represent and work with Manaz and support her in this project and support you moving forward too so thank you thank you Nigel Mike yeah my name is Mike um, I've been a coach for 15 16 years something like that um, before that um i worked in people development in in business um, working specifically on helping them to do their jobs in a better way um i trained with manas um originally on on the course that we did we did a training course a long time ago uh, using nlp um, and um it's been a real this is a real opportunity for growth for all of the people who are on this zoom because um you'll get the opportunity to coach people which is a privilege it's a privilege that people allow you into their world to help them and whenever you do that as well as helping the person that you're working with you will they always said to me that whenever you ask a question and you listen to the answer there are two people who hear the question and hear the answer mm. one is the coach and one is the client as therefore by just following that through you will find that every time you work with somebody you coach yourself and then you do some self-development as well 
and this helps you to grow and this is why this is an opportunity for growth because it gives you that opportunity of having the privilege of working with other people and uh, um, I had a I worked with a client on 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 Monday and um, um, as you do when we, we were talking about superpowers and what was her superpower and she's gone away now to think about the superpower and I was thinking about it last night and it came to me that there's only one real superpower um, although there's many different kinds of kryptonite which gets in the way of the superpower <laughs> Um, but the superpower is love. And I, what I've found from my experience of coaching is that a lot of the time, in fact, I think all of the time, you're helping people to find love, love for themselves and, and remove the kryptonite, remove the thing that prevents the love from coming through. Because once they've got that, they can achieve anything. And, um, and that's what I think it's all about. And I'd just like to take a bit of time, because I know I'm taking too much time. <laughs> um, but I, I saw a, a recommendation that came through for one of Manaz's courses uh, the other day, which Manaz kindly sent to me. That was confidential, by the way. <laughs> And it was Nobody confidential, knows. that's why I'm telling everybody, um, <laughs> because, because I know that she won't. Um, but, but basically, it was a lady who would spent an awful lot of money doing a training course with a company that we all know pretty well. And the lady was saying how much she valued the work that she was doing with Manaz more than the really expensive course that she paid a lot of money for. And I thought about that and I thought, well, what makes the difference? What makes it into that good? Because that course would maybe have 80 or 100 people in, right? Manaz's course won't. And I've been in Manaz's course. And what I find when I'm in Manaz's course is that taking, again, this theme of love and finding love, I always find that there's a lot of love in the room when you're in the room with Manaz because that is what she does. So that is my recommendation to you to sign up for this course. Okay? Blimey, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. Um, so... I actually, um, the, the subject for this conversation was about the benefits of coaching and what has, has anybody who's here other than those who've been through the program actually had coaching before either professionally or personally, just put your hands up or yeah, Shanaz. Okay. Um, so I'm just wondering, I mean, would, would anyone like to share the benefits that they've received? I mean, if Shazia and Russia are okay to do this, that would be really nice to hear. I could tell you mine. I mean, there's been so many. But let's start with Shazia. Is that okay? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, I mean, there are so many. Um, I think the thing with the benefits of coaching is, is that they don't stop. So whilst you're in that intensive program, a lot happens and change is, I think, quite apparent, but it carries on and on. Um, as Mike was saying, that when you're in a conversation with somebody, you're learning at that point, um, you're having your own insights, if not within that conversation at some point after. And so it's the gift that keeps on giving. Um, and the benefits are growth um, and seeing a perspective that you wouldn't have seen before or getting an understanding that you hadn't had before thinking you know something and unlearning it and learning something new um, and it can be about you for me personally it was 
I mean, I changed my career. I have a different outlook on uh, stress or the relationships I've had with people, arguments and conflicts that I've had. I look at very differently. Um, I don't, I think one of the significant things for me that I'd like to say is that I, I used to hang on to um, a lot of hurt and I'd live in that hurt and it would just kind of I'd be upset at why did this happen or why was that said and how could it be and all of all of those kind of wallowing um, really sad places really um, and I just don't do that anymore and it doesn't mean I don't feel anymore I very very much feel everything still and I'll still have moments where those things are happening with conflict but I just don't live in it anymore and it makes for a, a much more joyous life and and yeah you know as mike said wonderfully it's it's about it's about seeing the love above the rest of it and understanding that what we see in that moment is not necessarily how it was or not necessarily how it has to be in the next moment and so we can make that choice and i think one of the ma major benefits of coaching for me was understanding that I really have choices. You know, I can make the choice. I have the will and I have the, the ability to choose. And that really, really gave me a lot of power or I saw my power in a way that I hadn't before, that I hadn't known that I had it. Um, and from that point of view, uh, even at times when I haven't chosen to make choices and I've gone back into those places of sadness or, or maybe stress or unseeing, I come out of it much, much quicker. And so I think that what it's enabled me to do is to be always in a state of rebalancing, but rebalancing really quickly. Uh, and I think that's really important for us as human beings and this world we live in and what we give to this world. You know, if we're always, if we understand how to rebalance ourselves, we can then have those vibrations come out to the rest of the world. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Russia? There you go. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So um, I did the coaching course, I think uh, it's two years now. And um, it's really changed things like Shazia said, that uh, you don't hold on to things for too long. And so what happens is you start living more in the moment. And that's something that's really beautiful as well. Of course, you get irritated and hurt and stuff, but it just, you can just come back to the moment faster. And that's something that's really helped me because I feel that that was something that I would hold on to things. And besides that, each coaching experience is, it helps you grow as a person. So you learn something new every time. And that's the beauty of it, that it's constantly helping you grow as well as helping you give. And that's something that's really changed things for me. So um, I think everyone should do it. And I did my coaching thing with, uh, practice with Shazia and we had Nehraz also on board. And just the space was full of love, as Mike said, and it was just, and that's something that it just, it makes you feel that you're part of a community and then you want to have that for everybody and the whole world, as Nana says, and make it a better world that way. And it shows you that there is a better way of living, which is so beautiful. And I think we can all learn from that. And it's something we should do anyway, regardless if you want to be a coach or not, because it gives you a taste of what life can be like. So I think it's worth going the course. Thank you, Rasha. I think you broke, broke up a bit there. Russia's actually dining in from Karachi. Um, benefits in terms of, um, for me, just to add to what 
everyone said so far i think um i think it's it's about it's it gives you an opportunity to really reflect and take time out to really figure out what it is that you want to be doing especially when you're in transition i think i i was the the whole thing for me came at the perfect time when i was transitioning out from a high flying job not knowing what i wanted to do other than coach because i had had a coach and um the process of transition and and the fact that through the course you get to work with so many different people who've got different context and stories and um, outcomes and goals it just gives you such a, a wide range of potential clients to work with in the space of a group and and you don't run out of things to work on which is also really interesting but you do find a place of um i'll call it peace and then you, as you do your own work, you find a sense of alignment with, with who you are and your values and where you want to be going in your life. And, and some people come on the training wanting to be coaches and not knowing and actually end up doing something totally different. But it's given them the clarity to know that that is exactly where they wanted to go as well. But then they take the skills with them which can impact families, loved ones, neighbors, friends, just from the, the change that you see, that they see in you, rather than you even noticing the change that's happened within you. Because a lot of the time it's unconscious. And that's where the, I think that's where the biggest, the biggest outcome is in terms of you change, you don't really know that you've changed. <laughs> Just feel better about yourself. And that impacts everybody around you, all those that you know and love. Um, but also it becomes a part of who you are as a human being. You know, the, the way that confidentiality is such a big deal in, in the coaching world, not giving away information or, sh you know, get gossiping i'll say the word um all of that just goes out of the window it's not important anymore the story is not even important you can have a coaching session with somebody and not even know what you're talking about in terms of the content of what they're dealing with i've seen coaching session happen between a coach and a client in two different languages with neither of them understanding each other but there's something that's happening in that conversation and they notice it themselves so it's a really powerful tool in terms of getting rid of the kryptonite, as Mike was saying, um, but also seeing the kryptonite, because we walk around not even knowing the kryptonite exists. Mm. We don't even know it's there, and we've all got it. We've all got the shadow. We've all got the blocks in the past, the things that stop us from being who we want to be, um, whether that's in a career or as a person or as a human being, you know, whether it's something to do with the age or if it's something to do with um, beliefs about who you are right now in your life that are very limiting to your own potential. And, and nobody can tell you that. And, you know, when somebody tells you that, you're just like defensive. You think it's challenging. But when you realize it for yourself, it's a whole new level of understanding. And that can only ever come from you. Are there any other benefits that you'd like to share? Nilifa, would you like to say anything around the benefits? Yeah, I think um, it's a subconscious thing, but as you are finding out more about yourself, the ripple effect of that it's literally putting, putting a, st a stone in a pond because there is a ripple effect that everyone around you will notice a difference in you. And consciously and subconsciously, you start coaching because you believe in that. You, you believe this, this, this um, aha moment, the, the, the lights suddenly come on and you reflect that. 
and people around you notice that. And I think it's just, it's just perpetuating all the time. And depending on where you are and how prepared you are to learn the lessons that you need to learn, you move faster. But the nice thing about coaching and having a coach um, is you work at your own pace. You know, there, there is no, there is, you, you're not in it for the, to win something. You're just in it because for maybe the first time in your life, you've been given an opportunity and permission to be yourself and to go places you would, were scared to go or you didn't think you'd want to go to. So that for me, I think is one of the biggest benefits of coaching is that you're suddenly given permission to do it. Um, but at your pace, with a lot of love and respect and compassion, even being able to articulate your own value systems, you know, you may subconsciously feel that way, but this is now in your face. So there are lots and lots of benefits and it's different for different people, but I think everybody's spoken in beforehand and said it. It's all around having the love and the safety net and the positivity that helps you move forward in your life. Thank you. Mike? Yes. <clears throat> what else? Well, apart from the opportunity for personal growth that you get for yourself, there's, all, there's also the the feeling of being able to help others and seeing how people can change. You know, you, you should never go into coaching unless you want to change something because something will change. And when I talk about the superpower and the kryptonite, the kryptonite is often other kinds of emotion. Um, one of our teachers, I seem to remember, said a while back that there was only one true emotion, and that emotion is love. And every other emotion that you get is a distortion of that emotion. And the, the things they were talking about were things like anger and guilt and sadness. And there's another one that I can't remember at the moment. But these are the main forms of kryptonite. And these are the things that get into pe in people's way. These are the things that uh, block people from making the achievements that they want to, they want to make or realize the potential that they can. And, you know, there's something about it. When you're in a coaching session, and I mean, I'm, the people who've been in that arena will know what I'm talking about. There, there is a point at which you're with the client and something happens that is magical. You know, you, you get, you, 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 a, a word comes up. Maybe the word is pride, right? And you both get the same metaphor and it comes up in your mind without being said. And she, the, 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 the client will say to you, oh, pride, well, that takes me to a trophy cabinet that doesn't have many trophies in it. And then all of a sudden you say, okay, when was the last time you felt pride? When was the time that you felt pride more than any other? Well, can we take that and put that in the trophy cabinet? And give me another time, and then they give you another time. And, and you fill a trophy cabinet with pride. And you're doing this in a, an environment of pure love. You've got a contact with the other person and you're speaking exactly the same language. And I don't know any other place that I can be or any other situation that I can be in that allows me to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is the joy of coaching. Um, I, I sent Manaz a, a message this week where I actually I talked about a client that I'd had. 
and I, I just ended it, but I love coaching. You know, get into this thing because it's amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. It makes you feel alive, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it does make Except you feel... Definitely everybody else who's a coach out there. Do you yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also the, the fact that you, ha you, know, you welcome the kryptonite. And that there isn't another profession, a profession that will welcome kryptonite. Yeah. Because we see it as what it is when we're coaching. Yeah. Nigel? Yeah, amazing. Thank, thanks, Mike. And, I, and what resonates with me there, I had a coach here, a client said to me this week, it is just so obvious. Yeah. It's so, since we've had our, since we've been working together, things keep falling into place. It, it's given me a sense of clarity. And then we start working with, yeah, I found myself going into crash and getting really locked into, into fight, flight, freeze or fold, aggression, running away, all the things that we do as human beings to just mask how we're feeling. Now I can welcome that, actually look forward to that because I know that that's something that tells me something good's coming. Mm. And that means I'm no longer frightened of that. So things that used to scare me no longer hold any fear for me. But it's still there because it's always there because that's who we are. We're human beings. I was been working on something. I didn't know I was going to work on it, but personally what happened to me recently is that I've been working on uh, not eating as much, comfort eating, and um, lose. I mean, I didn't intend. It wasn't the intention of lose, losing weight. It was just intention of wanting to be around for another twenty or thirty years, and nothing really very important. Just you know, just another twenty or thirty years would be nice. And so I started to investigate that and why I would eat sweets, why I would go into the shop and buy. These lovely sweets, I can taste them now, delicious. <laughs> I've been working on that and I realise now pictures started to come to me about the five-year-old Nigel who would go into the kitchen, open the cupboard door and eat sugar out of the sugar bowl. Mm. And knowing that, I've been able to get to the sweet counter and go, this is interesting. I'm thinking about buying sweets. What is it that's really important to me? And I have a conversation that says, what else could you do instead? And I can walk away from the sweets now. I can notice when I'm opening the fridge door and go, this is interesting, I've opened the fridge door. How did I get here? Wow, and then I can close the fridge door. But something else happened this week in a coaching session when I was coaching somebody else and an image that came to me was an even younger, well, no, it's about the same age, a five-year-old Nigel that was clinging hold of his mother's buttons on her coat because that was the first day I went to school. The separation, the, the terror, the fear, the pain, not, not of what was going to happen, but that I was going to have to be on my own. And I now know that that is at the heart of my comfort for sweets, that on the way home that first day, we swapped, stopped at the sweet shop. And every day, every week, my nan used to give me threepence, threepenny bit, that's old money for those that don't know that, to buy sweets. And so I had associated this comfort of the, 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 the locked, total neuromuscular lock of being separated from my mum with eating sweets and getting sweet sugar. Knowing that has freed me and that's unlocking 
the potential of of coaching. I'm so grateful to I know and it's only by living this this coaching world that I can achieve what I most want in the world. I have to be comet first before I can work with clients. I have to understand I have to be that first. It's a lovely feeling. Mm. And I think every everyone who's about to to embark on the coaching, that's what you've got to look forward to. Amazing. I I really appreciate what you're saying about the child and how the child affected you in that. I, I had a client um a while ago who came in and she came into the session with her seven year old child. She said, I've got my seven year old child here. Yeah. And we, we both spent the session, both of us coaching the seven year old child. <laughs> <laughs> and that was an absolutely amazing experience, you know? And as the child changed, right? As the child became satisfied and happy and cared for and loved, the adult changed. Yeah. Life mm. for the adult changed. Mm because of that yeah yeah and that's another thing that that i i do want to put in here actually is um coaching is such a a creative space a generatively creative space where you will see things and bring things up that the client will go wow can I just clarify what I said there? Because I've just thought about yeah, what yeah. I said and people might not understand. There wasn't an actual child. No. It was her <laughs> child. Her when she was seven years old. She brought in. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we both coached her when she was seven years old. Sorry, I, I just wanted to clarify that because I thought... Yeah, that's a good point because I saw that it was her, but yes. others may yeah. not have. Yeah, yeah well, other people might not. So I thought, yeah. can I, do you mind if, when I was, can I just say something else about that? Because I, something I've yeah. noticed sure. is, is that actually when we, when, we, when we experience, let's call them mild, not really traumas as such, but that five-year-old Nigel that was clinging hold of his mum was a, yes. a trauma to him. Trauma. But when we when we experience that neuromuscular lock for whatever reason we carry that with us mm. yeah. so actually it's perfectly possible at 60 year old that we, although people see the 60 year old version of nigel they see the 60 year old nigel what they may be actually experience a meeting is the five-year-old nigel and not know it yes and we can because i'm holding something in lock so if i'm if i've got an attitude or a, a really i've had a really bad experience that's the nigel that turns up mm. and actually that's interesting because that's the nigel that has the has the will the values the beliefs the everything that that actually in that moment is what said and experienced and actually, that may not be the fully grown adult Nigel. That may yeah. just be. Yeah. That's back to the behaviours of a five-year-old. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and whoever you've been in the past, you still are. Yeah, it's there. Still. It's there. Yeah. In... So yeah. you can't, we can't change the past. We can't change what we did five seconds ago. No. What we can do is welcome it and say, hi, mm. you're part of me. Get in here. Isn't it great that I am 61 years old? I'm still alive. I'm here. And I'm in. Isn't that great? What is it that I most want? And what about this Nigel is stopping him from getting there? Just stop and think and hold that. Play with that. Experience that. Just see what emerges because we can work with that to produce what I most want in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things about, yeah, in terms of, I, mean, I do want to just say something in regards to the difference between coaching and other 
forms of support that you can get out there in the world. Um, obviously, there's therapy, um, which is something that many people use um, when they really need help. Uh, but that's not what coaching is. Coaching is more forward looking and about goals and outcomes that your client wants to achieve. But if at some point that reference goes back to their past, it's not our job as a coach to unpick that and open a Pandora's box of whatever comes up um, because it gets you back into that space again, which isn't very productive. But you can work with what's real right now, which is exactly what Nigel and Mike are just talking about because that comes up in the moment. But it's not our job as coaches to go back and unpick a lot of what happened in the past because that will never end. We are so creative as human beings. We could make it mean X, Y, and Z, and our thought process could take us, you know, through a whole pile of, it's like a maze. We don't know where it's going to take us. So the difference between therapy and coaching is that we, we are looking at what's happening in the moment and exploring that and then looking at where the kryptonite is. I'm going to use your analogy, Mike, which is stopping us from getting to where we want to get to. Um, coaching is also not counselling. Counselling is a listening tool where we counsellors generally just listen to a client and there aren't really any outcomes or goals um, from what I understand. Um, are there any other? Are there any well, other? There, there are other knots, you know, like it's not being an advisor. Don't advise, no. You're not there to tell them how to live their lives. This was one of the hardest things that I found because I was a consultant um, and, and a leader and a manager. And um, actually, I think coaching is more aligned to leadership than it is with management. Um, I think anyone with coaching skills would be incredible as a leader. And I think the ones that are out there are coaches, the ones that are incredible leaders. So you can see that. Um, it's where they pull the answers out from the people that work with them rather than dictating what needs to be done. Um, so yeah, absolutely, Mike. Is there anything else? You're not a teacher either. No, you're, not, teacher. you're not a teacher. You're not teaching them how to live their life. You're not a mentor. Mentors are totally different because you're teaching your experience to the person you're mentoring. Um, we do have the option on the program to have mentoring after the coaching training's finished, which would be with an experienced coach. Um, that's on the website. But this is definitely a profession in its own right. Another uh, thing that, well, one thing that coaching is, it's surprising. It's surpri I've, I've never, you know, from one session to the next, you know, you, you might have a session with somebody and you think, oh, maybe we should have done this. Maybe I should have asked this. Oh, next time, maybe I'll do this. Right? I've never actually done that because when you get into the actual coaching course, you just respond to what the person brings. And what they bring at that time can't be predicted. So you will always have something fresh to work with. Hmm. Yeah, and the other thing I'd say about it again, I'm talking far too much, but here you we are, go. Mike. something else that, that I would say about it is that coaching is dynamic. You know, I, 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 I there was a, a Woody Allen film a while ago, uh, came out, it was about a thousand year old man or something, you know, and they, they, they defrosted him from an ice block and he came out and he was, and somebody said to him. Wow, if you'd been in therapy, you'd just be about cured now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coaching's not like that. You know, no. coaching, you know, five, six, seven sessions, three sessions, two sessions, one session, one yeah. minute, you know, can make a difference to somebody. You know? Diana, do you want to share anything in terms of the benefits? Would you like to say a few words before we move on to questions? Hi. No, Hi. I don't. What are the benefits for you, having been on the program? Um, 
Oh my God. It was my awakening, as I'm always saying. Uh, and it felt like <laughs> I was reborn in a way. And I found myself as I lost myself somehow in any way, but whatever. Uh, it was, let's say, deep, uh, magical, and I can use the word now, atom. <laughs> I can lip read. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Diana. Um, does, we've only got, we've just about got time for questions. We've got another 10 minutes left. Was, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask about the course, coaching? What, <laughs> anything come up for you at the moment? Yes, Namira, you're gonna have to, I'm gonna unmute you. Thank you. Hi, Hi. so good to hear you guys all. Seems to be a very nice um, program. I just wanted you. to know, what's the duration? I mean, how long is it? So it starts next Friday <laughs> for an hour. So it's an hour next Friday and then it starts next weekend. Um, but it's one and a half days over a weekend and then it's once a month for the next six months. So it works over a period of time. So you get lots and lots of practice in the classroom, which is going to be online. The hour next Friday is basically to help people um, to understand how the process of, of the work will take place because it is not like a normal classroom. It's a very different way of learning. It's all experiential. Um, and we will have resource people in the room supporting your learning as well. Lots of breakouts. I'm going to take you off technology for as long as I possibly can during the time that we are on together. Um, but it's from 10 till 4 on a Saturday and then 10 till 1 on a Sunday. And then there's another in-between module because we try and get to um, a certain number of hours should you want to use it in future to become accredited because you've done the training hours. Um, if that's something you'd like to do, the potential for doing that will probably be there. But it's not really about that. This program is more about you and your own development and practicing as a coach so that you can self-coach, but also help coach those that you work with or live with. Um, and and who, know, who knows what else can come up? I never thought I'd be a trainer in my life. I remember doing presentations and at work and avoiding them like the plague and now I run programs which is uh, yeah very new for me I've never liked being the public eye but this is different because I it, it's like a playground you're playing the entire time and if you think about the best ways to learn and how kids learn they play when they're learning and we forget that that is yeah. one of the easiest ways to to kind of pick up knowledge and unlearn and learn new things so that's, that's the program. I'm going to put a link in the chat so you can see the details um, of the program. And it's got all the dates and the costs and things in there. Um, oh, thank you. You're welcome, Namira. Where are you, Namira? Are you in the UK? Kenya. I'm in Kenya, Nairobi. I'm together with um, I your see. buddy there. Nella, Nella. <laughs> in the okay, super. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for the question. Does anybody else have a question they'd like to ask? Um, I have one. Shana's here. Hello, Shana's here. <laughs> um, you know, you, you mentioned um, different ways of um, uh, basically, you know, people going out to seek support and help, whether it is through coaching or through mentoring or through counseling, et cetera. And, you know, having 
uh, had some experience of coaches from the fact that, you know, we have a couple of them in the family, um, you know, and we understand, and I understand kind of all the uh, nuances of it. Um, but the, the, the key that I wanted to um, table here is how do you show the, um, the tangible value? You know, I think right now with so many people out there, um, in workplaces that are constantly needing to deliver on KPIs and you know how do you how do you show the tangible aspects of coaching uh, when you go out and you you know you talk about um, uh, coaching and the benefits of it because um, for me it's very much around as you said self growth and self development and it's very personal and there's a lot of intangibleness as well, but how do you kind of quantify that um, to someone when you're trying to, uh, to um, you know, raise the profile of coaching and what it all means? It's a very good question. Um, so in terms, of, in terms of coaching as an industry, it is growing it's becoming more recognized. I mean, when we started in the early 2000s, it was very, it was a small niche. Um, so it's, it's recognized in the industry at the moment. It's being seen as something that will improve the performance of those that are actually going through the program. In an organizational setting, there are three people involved in the coaching. There's the organization, the client, and yourself. So you have the sponsor who's actually paying for the work to be done. Um, but the investment is, it's all about the individual's growth. Now that could mean that this individual leaves or it could mean because they have a wide, they have more, they have more potential than what's available to them in the organization. I'm going to hand over to you, Mike. I know you're going to want to answer this one. Yeah, um, because I, I spend a lot of time with this. Um, yeah because I used to be, this goes back to my professional days when I was yeah. um, working in industry with people development and you have KPIs yeah, and mm -hmm. you have things that you have to achieve and this is the thing that you do. And, and, and we, we have a model that we work with on this because you can only do the thing that you're supposed to do from the place where you're coming from. And that is the place where you spent all your life coming to be. Now, sometimes you can change your performance against your KPIs if you come from a slightly different place, if you have less barriers and if the, barrier, the barriers move. So, so that's the reason. When I say it's not about counselling, when it's not about training, when it's not about teaching, it's about the individual and changing the place where the individual comes from, because that is the thing that sets you free. And that's the thing that will help you to fly. Yeah. yeah. And way, way beyond your, your KPRs and, and, and your measures. That, I think where Shanaz is coming from is actually making sure that the organization, where we come in as coaches is meeting the targets that are set by the organization. Is that right, yeah. Shanaz? Yeah. And and when you're working with an organization, they have their targets. So it's kind of knowing what the targets are and working with the organization to achieve those targets. And there's no guarantee because once you start tapping into this this work with an individual, something shifts. Yes. So either they meet the KPIs or the targets that are set. But here's the other thing about coaching, which I think is really important, is is that you can work as a coach with people at level, managerial level to help them perform better. Yeah. But the real change that you're going to get when you work in an organization is when you work with the leaders. Because it's the leadership that sets the precedence for everything else in the organization. And I think that is where the KPI is the, is the most important. Because they can change the environment. You can't change the organization from a managerial level. You can change it from their level down and potentially influencing up, but I'm not sure that that it would it would have as big as an effect. No, the way that I'm looking at that, I think I think the KPIs can be a a, a tool for productivity and for achievement of what yeah. everyone wants to do. 
but it can also set a ceiling. And if you really want to bust out and break that ceiling, then it's the individuals that are going to do it. It's the people that are going to do it. And if you if if you have more resourceful people, then they will be better for the organisation. And and I think I think that's the thing that we sell. You know, we we sell to the companies productive people, mm. more productive people because. They're more creative, they're more able, they have more self-love, they have more capability. I mean, in my personal experience of actually getting the coaching in the organisation that I was in when I was in the bank, um, I grew out of the organisation. The, the coaching was brilliant in terms of my, yeah. excuse me, my performance when I was in the organisation because I did thrive from that point and I don't know how that happened. I'll never be able to put my finger on the button in terms of what, and it really explained what that was, but it, it, in six months, my career just shot through the roof. And then I just couldn't stay in there anymore because I wanted to do what he did with me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Did that help? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Does anyone else have any, have any other questions? Zana, do you have any questions? I feel like you, you're all part of a secret organisation that I'm not going to do. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> no. Nas, what you said really resonated in terms of coming out of the corporate world, which is where I kind of find myself after 33 years, coming out of that corporate world and just having a bit of mind space now myself. COVID has obviously helped. No one could have predicted that. Mm. But just in terms of, yeah, what, what, what is the potential? And what do I want to do now? And that's confusing when you actually want to do a lot as well, mm. but you can't do everything. And, and, and it's just narrowing, narrowing it down. Or, or do you have to narrow it down? And that's the question. That's a very good question. Yeah. Yeah. But they're very good questions, and that's the key. And actually the point of exploration happens in my mind a lot easier when you're held in a space where you can explore without judgment, without wanting you to have an answer for yourself or without even wanting to you to take a path that I want you to take because it's not my life, it's entirely yours. Um, and actually being in a space where you're at the start of the exploration of what this means is so perfect for this space, you know, because you will have a chance to explore at, um, to the nth degree and then even stop. And, and, it, and, and who knows where that will take you because I don't have a crystal ball, I couldn't tell you. But what I do know is that, and this is a word that Mike's used quite a lot, is um, we've had conversations about the alchemy and finding that thing that works for you where you are in your life right now. But the potential is huge. I mean, the potential of, because as I said before, you know, coaching is a creative space it's and i know you're a creative person i know everybody here is creative um and as coaching really does embody leadership real leadership you know the potential for you or creating your own organizations or running your own thing or you know even just coaching others and it doesn't matter if they're children or or elderly people or people in corporates or not, you know, the, the world's your oyster. There are so many opportunities. It's, wherever there's a human, there's an opportunity for some work to be done. One of the hardest questions to answer, and sometimes it takes a few sessions to get to it, is what do you want? And what do you want to have happen? And a lot of people take a while to get to that. So, you know, you're in corporate, what do you want to do? You want to be better in corporate? 
you want to be able to do your job better, you want to be out of corporate, you want to move to something else, you want to try window cleaning. I mean, what is it? You know, what is it that you actually want? What's going to give you the fulfillment? And there's a question behind that, which I always ask, which is, but what do you really want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I often say, what do you most want? <laughs> yeah. Because there'll be a different answer each time. <laughs> a whole host of things there that, that yeah. you might want. Yeah. But equally, there's another question, which is, what were you brought into the world? Yeah. What, did you, what do you to bring to the world? Well, what's your calling? Mm. A, a one, one that I like an awful lot is something that I, I got out of clean language. And the clean language question is, what would you like to have happen? With all of that and who you are, what would you like to have happened now with your life? If you were in charge and you were guiding it, where would you like it to take you? Actually, that's a really good point because I think one of the things that I got from the coaching training and, and my learnings ever since is that this is about creating a life that you want to live into. That's the bottom line with this work. And I think to do to do that, it's not possible to keep it in here. No. Because there's so much in there that's conflict. Everything is conflicting. Everything wants to be heard all at once. It's about sort of being able to take it down and allowing it to swim, just be. Yeah, I was speaking to a client the other day about she's stuck and and. And we were talking about how she had hundreds of things that she wants to do. And I said, well, how do you learn how to swim? And she said, she goes, you get in the water. And I said, yeah, you get in the water. Are you in the water right now? Nope. So I said, you can't read a textbook instruction on how to swim while you're sitting in a chair at a desk. It just won't happen. And something clicked in that moment next thing you know she's applied for 50 jobs and they're all different so it's the, a playing field and the answers are in there yeah just need unlocking yeah they are in the universe to guide you yeah beautiful beautiful well absolutely Absolutely. <laughs> that's what coaches do is tap into that with with you it's the space and the t in between that there's the coaching mm. yeah we're on out of time thank you all for coming i hope you found this useful um I've shared the link in the chat if you want to have a look at that. Um, if you have any other questions, then please feel free to ask or get in touch. Um, as I said, Nilla for Mike and Nigel and some others. Uh, we have a facilitator in Jordan who's also going to be joining us um, and also potentially someone in Nigeria. So uh, unfortunately, they couldn't make it this evening. but you were going to get a wealth of experience and learning from different people with different skills and different backgrounds. And I think that's one of the things that I wanted to bring into the space was a richness of, of the different types of things you could learn from different people, because me as a teacher gives one way of learning and way of being, and then you're going to learn something from a different person totally. And none of them are good or bad. They just are, so I hope, you, I hope you sign up. I hope to see you on this journey. It's going to be really, really good fun and a real deep exploration. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you.